This is our Swift Base Camp 2. It's a 2020 special edition model and at the time of making this video we have owned it for a year. So a question that comes up regularly on the uh, base camp uh, social groups is why do new base camps that have only been used two or three times come up for sale? And this is quite regularly. There are a lot of new base camps that come up for sale and why is that? So from my experience of owning a base camp for nearly a year, I will try and answer that question. So if you're looking to buy a Swift base camp or you're, um, you've just bought one and you're feeling a little bit unsure about it, maybe this video would be helpful. So let's start with the dream. The dream is that you're gonna buy a caravan and that you're gonna to tour the country and have a great time discovering new places in the United Kingdom. The reality of that can be quite different when you're new to caravanning, as I found out when I bought this base camp. This was my first caravan and I was not aware or ready for what's involved when you get, when you get one. So let me explain. So you've bought your base camp, it's the first time you're going out on it. Let's talk about what's involved in a, in a, in a broad level. So firstly, you're going to obviously pack your base camp. You're going to pack your caravan, as you would do if it was a camper van or a motorhome. But with your caravan, you're going to need to hitch it to your car. So in my case, I need to pull it up the drive first using the motor mover to get it positioned behind the car. And then I will hitch it to the car. I will need to connect the electrics um, and then put the towing mirrors on the, on, the, on the side mirrors of the car. And then I'm ready to tow. Next is the process of towing the caravan to the chosen destination. Now, when you're new to caravanning, as I was, that's quite stressful in itself because you realize that you've got this expensive asset, it's on the back of your car, and you as the driver are fully responsible for it. So that's quite stressful at first. You then arrive at your campsite, you find your pitch, and you then need to unhitch the caravan and then get it on the pitch. Now you'll either reverse it on or you'll use the motor mover as I do to get it on the, on the pitch. Next, you need to go around and put the four steadies on. Now all caravans have a steady, two at the front, two at the back. So you need to lower those. And then you've got the process of connecting your water. So every caravan has an external water supply or 90% of the caravans have an external water supply um, from a 40 litre tank called an Acarol. So you need to go and get that water unless you're on a service pitch and there's a tap on your pitch that you can connect to. You then need to you know, hook up your grey water, which is for your shower and your sinks. Um, so there's a tank that goes under the caravan for that. Or if you're on a service pitch, you will connect it via a pipe to a drain pipe. You then need to set your toilet up, put the chemicals in the, in the toilet uh, cassette and then put your flush in. Next thing to do is you need to prime all the taps. So that is pump the water through the taps so the water is ready to use and maybe switch your hot water on if you want to. So there's quite a bit to do when you first arrive on site and then you might also have an awning. So if you've got an awning, you need to put that, put that up as well. Now they are quite straightforward to pull up awnings, but if it's windy, sometimes you can have them up in 20 minutes, sometimes it can take an hour. So you have the awning to put up if you choose to have one. So as I was saying, there's quite a lot to do. And then, you know, you're ready to enjoy your weekend break or your holiday, your week away, whatever it is you do. So at the time I'm making this video, I am six days away from departing for a week long trip touring the west coast of Scotland. So I'm already preparing the base camp. So let's go inside and have a look where we're up to so far. So as we come into the base camp, first thing, I've got the Van Gogh RVA1 awning um, strap already strapped in and I've got it strapped in into the bike into the bike rack straps in the floor there so it doesn't move around. Now this awning weighs 27 kil kilograms and I wouldn't normally take it with me on a touring trip like this but because we've got friends coming with us we've got in convoy in motorhomes it will be a great space for us all to meet and have food and drinks. So I'm taking it but it's very heavy to handle and it's hard work to put it up and down by myself. Um, so I'm going to have to take that up and down six times during this trip as we're on three different sites. So that's just quite a bit of work for me to do. 
and then over here i've already got the um the 24 inch smart tv strapped to the bench seat but again it's just another job to do is when we're uh, uh, leaving and, and, and departing and arriving at site it's just another job to do obviously here the the basket that goes here i've got that now in the bedroom as i'm already packing it that's for all my clothes and then we'll obviously um my wife will use the oh well, there you go she's already started putting things into the wardrobe and started packing it so these are just all extra jobs uh, that need to be done before we've even set off so as we come around to the front of the the base camp let's just have a look in, into the locker so as we come into the front locker so there are the towing mirrors that i'll put on the car the day before we leave and in the corner here i've got an extension lead which i'll run from the external um, socket on the base camp into the awning so our friends can charge their phones and, and, and devices should they need to when, when, when we're chilling out in the awning. I've already swapped out the um, six caligram propane tank for a fresh one so that's full because we'll be running the uni and the cadet barbecue off that off the base camp. In here will be the wheel lock so the security I've got to take that on and off each time we arrive and depart at a pitch so that's m more jobs to be done. I've got the 10 metre um, electric cable and then here I've got a 25 metre electric cable. Now obviously the 10 metre electric cable is easier to put in and put away than the 25 metre but still it's a job that needs to be done and here I've got the, the feet stocks um, should we not be level and here I've got the um, the hitch lock that will I won't use that if the campsite have got a barrier so i probably won't need to use that and underneath there i've got the levelers should the pitch not be level and then i've got all my water connections for um filling the acarole or connecting to a service pitch and then obviously then i've got the motor mover um lever and then the the, the steady the steady device for raising and lowering the steadies and then finally i've got a doormat there for wiping the feet when we go into the awning so these are all jobs that need to be done. Just something to consider. And finally, there I have the Acarole and the Wastemaster ready to be packed. The Acarole will go in the boot of the car, the Wastemaster will go in a bag and will be strapped into the base camp on the floor. But again, more jobs to be done. So now it comes to the end of your holiday and it's time to prepare to return home. So you're doing everything in reverse. So you'll take your awning down and pack that away. You'll unhook your electric cable and pack that away. You now need to drain off your Acarole if you've got any water left on it. So you need to take that to a, to a drain if there's not one on your pitch. And the same with the grey water tank, which is under the base camp or under your caravan, you need to take that and drain that off. There's then the lovely job of the toilet cassette. Um, it, it, which does get better by the way once you've done it once you've done it a million times um, but that needs to be done and you may have done that a couple of times whilst, you, whilst you've been on site already you then need to um, pack, the, pack the caravan up ready to go home you've got everything packed away you then need to put your four, four steadies up Hit, hook up your motor mover engage your motor mover and position the, the, the caravan ready to be hitched back to the car you then need to hitch it back to the car, connect the electrics, ensure that you're, you disengage your motor mover and, and everything's secure, ready to be towed. And then you tow the, uh, the base camp back to your home or to your storage yard. And in my case, I get it back on the, on the on outside my house. I need to unhitch it and then I'll use the motor mover to put it back down my drive. And then all that's left for me to do then is put the steadies down and disconnect, disengage the motor mover and broadly that's it job done i'll then unpack it and then clean it afterwards so there is a lot to do it, there is a lot to do so when you first get it that is a lot and the first two or three times i've been out in it i was coming back absolutely exhausted and on, on reflection that that's what i would now call the pain barrier so you've you've spent a lot of money on your caravan or in this case a, a base camp you've gone out in it a couple of times you found there's a lot to do that you weren't expecting and you, you're in that place where you're not sure is, if it's for you or not. And I think, personally believe that that's the point that a lot of new owners decide to sell them. However, from my experience, and, and I can promise this, that if you push through that pain barrier and you just continue to use it, by the time you've used it five or six times, 
just becomes routine. Now my wife and I have been out in this over a dozen times now and we just enjoy it, we really enjoy it. It's become easy, it's become routine. I actually enjoy all the preparation, towing it, preparing it. Um, it's just there is a pain barrier to go through and it, you just have to push through it. So that, that's my thoughts. I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any questions, just, just pop them in the, in the comments section and I'll, I, will, I will answer them. Um, but in the meantime, thank you very much for, for watching this video. I hope you found it useful and I will see you on the next one. Thank you.